You know what the most vulnerable place is in today's times? It is beneath the sea. You heard that right. Beneath the sea where internet cables connect India to Europe, cable warfare is raging, posing a grave threat to global communication. And we here at Gravitas have been telling you, when the war breaks out in one place, no country or individual goes untouched. And we say that because the conflict in the Red Sea has not only threatened international shipping, it has also affected key undersea cables, affecting internet access in West Asia, Europe as well as India. In fact, last week we told you someone was sabotaging undersea internet cables amid the conflict between the Houthis and the US in the Red Sea. Today, four telecom networks have confirmed that submarine cables under the Red Sea have been cut. The Hong Kong Telecom HGC Global Communications stated that as much as 25% of the traffic in the area has been impacted. The company is currently rerouting traffic to keep disruptions to a minimum and extending assistance to affected businesses. The lines cut that have been affected, including Asia, Africa, Europe 1, the Europe India Gateway, Seacom and TGN Gulf. HGC Global Communications has described the Red Sea route as crucial for data moving from Asia to Europe. Seacom reported that initial testing indicates the affected cables are located within Yemeni maritime jurisdictions in the South Red Sea. Tata Communications, part of the Indian conglomerate and behind the Seacom TGN Gulf Line, told a news agency Associated Press that they have initiated immediate and appropriate remedial actions after the line was cut. And other firms behind those lines which provide data to Africa, Asia, West Asia did not immediately respond to queries. There are more than 15 undersea internet cables in the Red Sea. To have four damaged at a single time has been described as exceptionally rare. So the disruption did not disconnect any country from the internet, but services in India, Pakistan and parts of East Africa were noticeably degraded. But you know what has caught our attention? It's that no one knows why this has happened. No services have yet offered a reason for the cuts. Yemen's telecom ministry has denied speculation that it was responsible for the failures. They said they were keen on keeping all telecom submarine cables away from any possible risks. As is often the case with disruptions under the sea, it can be difficult to de determine what really has occurred. However, it's important to note that most of the internet's data traffic is carried by underwater cables. They are cheaper than land-based cables, but more susceptible to damage from ships' anchors. Sure, cable breaks happen all the time due to ships or fishing boats dragging their hooks. But you see, the ongoing conflict in West Asia has experts wondering about the timing and also the severity of this particular outage. In early February, Yemen's internationally recognized government in exile had alleged that Houthi rebels had planned to attack these cables. Internet disruptions were first noticed last month. Internet monitoring firm NetBlocks reported that internet services in the East African nation of Djibouti were facing disruptions. Seacom serves Djibouti. And then the question emerged, have the Houthis actually done what they threatened to do? Target the undersea internet cables? All fingers pointed towards the Yemen-based group. But for their part, the Houthis have denied targeting the cables. The Yemeni rebels blamed the internet disruptions on British and American military operations. They, of course, did not offer any evidence to support the allegation. But perhaps the more important question, can the Houthis attack subsea cables? It's not an easy exercise. How could they cut these cables that lie at the bottom of the ocean? They are not known to have diving or salvage capability to target the cables. So then is someone helping them? And if yes, who is helping them? And how are they helping them exactly? US warships are keeping a hawk eye in the region. And so far, there have been no reports suggesting that anyone or any country has sabotaged these cables. It is possible that these cables were affected by a ship's anchor dragging. Seacom sure believes that this is a plausible explanation because of the high amount of marine traffic in the region and the low seabed in many parts of the Red Sea. However, this can only be confirmed once repair ships reach the site. 
This incident highlights just how vulnerable subsea infrastructure really is. The Red Sea has around 16 cable systems that are often no thicker than a hose pipe. And these cables pass 1,200 miles through the Red Sea before they reach Egypt and connect to the Mediterranean Sea, linking Europe and Asia. And over the last two decades, this route has emerged as one of the world's largest internet choke points and the most vulnerable place on earth for the internet. Remember this region, which includes the Suez Canal, is also a global choke point for shipping and the movement of goods. It is estimated that over 90% of communications between Europe and Asia traverse submarine cables in the Red Sea. Unfortunately, telecom operators have built a high degree of redundancy into the system. So there are many cables traversing the Red Sea. While connectivity was restored within a few hours, these disruptions highlight the fragility the fragility of the world's 550 plus subsea internet cables and the outsized role the countries in the Red Sea have in the global internet's infrastructure. And these cables are the internet's backbone. They literally connect the world from New York to London to New Delhi to Hong Kong. As attacks on critical infrastructure continue to rise, there is growing concern about the safety of undersea cables. Could cables in other parts of the world also be at risk? We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.